Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pots, Pans, and Priscilla. Today we are going to be making mouth-watering, finger-licking good ribs. Ribs, guys, but not with a barbecue sauce because we are keto. We're doing lazy keto ribs. We are also going to pair that with cabbage. I know, sounds crazy. It's amazing. We are going to add some bacon and some ham to that cabbage to make it mm -mm good. So let's go. For our ingredients, we have cabbage, ham, bacon, onion, butter, all of your seasonings, apple cider vinegar, some Cajun seasoning, give it a little kick, garlic, Italian herbs, salt and pepper. We are using a pink Himalayan salt and regular salt, olive oil, Worcestershire, and our ribs. Let's get cooking, guys. So first of all, we are gonna take these ribs. I like to cut my slabs in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You will notice I have two cutting boards. I like to use my meat cutting board, which is the red one. And then I do all my vegetables on my wood cutting board. Once you get these cut, you're going to take a baking sheet, line it with tin foil, and that's what you're gonna put your ribs on. For those of you that don't like to touch meat, I totally get it. It kind of grosses me out a little bit. I'm trying to keep it together on camera for you. But I get it. I get it, guys. All right, so we'll go ahead and cut this slab first. And you just kind of pick wherever you want to do it. If you don't want to cut it, you don't have to. I just prefer to work with mine in smaller sections. Okay, then we're going to take our pan. I've already taken a cookie sheet, lined it with tin foil, set your ribs right on top. And then we're gonna come back to that once we get this one done. If you want, you could get your spouse to do this part for you if you don't like it. I personally don't like it. I should get Asa to do it. I don't want it to touch me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm like slipping all over the place here. Once you get it cut, it's pretty easy to open. It's so easy, so easy to open it. By the way, these are pork loin back ribs, just so you know. This one you could cut into threes. So like that, and then maybe like right here. So you have three different slabs to work with, okay? All right, so let's get this on our other baking sheet so I can get my hands washed. Ugh. There you go. So I'm gonna take all of this to the sink, get cleaned up, and I'll be right back. First things first, start with Worcestershire. I like to put my pans side by side, that way I can just do everybody all at one time. You don't wanna put this on after you put your seasonings because then you just, they fall off because it's a liquid, okay? Next up, Cajun seasoning. You don't wanna put a ton of this on. You want it to be enjoyable, you don't want your family to like you know it's a little spicy this one's mild though it's not too bad this is what i use to make my gumbo if you haven't seen that recipe i'll link that video above so you can go watch it this is my go-to seasoning all right you're going to take a little garlic powder don't be shy garlic's good man Tastes so yummy. The key with these ribs, guys, is gonna be patience. It's not a lot of skill, it's patience. Pepper, just regular black ground pepper. Himalayan pink salt. It's just nice. It's a little thicker than your regular white salt. 
gives you a little texture. You're gonna flip these over, do the same exact thing I just did. I don't like to touch it, so I like to use my tongs. It makes my life just that much better. <coughs> Okay, start off with your Worcestershire. You wanna give love to all your sides. Don't be shy with your seasonings, okay? You don't wanna over season it, but with ribs, it's kinda of hard to do that. They're gonna be cooking so long that it's not gonna matter. Like you're gonna, you need it to do this. You need to do this, guys. <coughs> if you're like me, I'm very sensitive to seasonings. There, I. I'm like coughing and sneezing right now. I love them. They just really get to my sinuses and open them all up. So guess what? They are ready to go in the oven. You're gonna cook them on 200. Low, low and slow. That is the key to this game, low and slow. 200, put them in there for about two hours. Don't put it too high because you don't wanna dry your ribs out. It's all about being patient. So if you're trying to do a quick dinner, this isn't that quick dinner, but it's super easy. I mean, you guys watch the whole thing. Got the ribs going. They are already smelling good, guys. I don't know how that works, but it does. So like I said, on 200 for about two hours, and um, you'll know when they're ready. So let's move on to the cabbage. First of all, we've got Big Bertha over here, okay? This is my gumbo pot. Again, if you have not seen that video, Go watch it. Do yourself a favor and go watch it. I love this pot. It is called Magnolite. For those of you that have asked, you can get it on Amazon. So we will link that down below. For my cabbage, I like to add bacon and ham because I'm extra like that. When you buy these hams, if you are keto, you need to make sure that you're not getting the honey ham or maple flavored or any flavors. This has a total of five carbs, three sugars. So, so that's eight carbs, but that's for the whole package. So it's not terrible. It's probably not great if you're doing like strict keto, but this is how I roll. You don't have to put the ham in. You could just do bacon if you're really strict keto, but it's not gonna taste like mine. Just putting that out there. Okay, got your ham. We will use this entire package of bacon. It's a big pot of cabbage, guys. We're gonna have lots of leftovers and my children love cabbage. You're gonna take your whole pack of bacon, just take it out in one fail swoop. I'm not gonna cut this into small chunks, I'm just gonna cut it down the middle and cook it just like this. There you go, just like that. The ham, we're gonna cut up into pieces. So we're just cubing this ham steak, just like that. This is the base for your cabbage. Unfortunately, this poor cabbage doesn't have a lot of flavor, so we gotta help them out a little bit. So that's why we're gonna add meat. So then we have meat flavored cabbage. Who doesn't love that? So this is the base. We're going to put this in Bertha and get it cooking. Your ham is cooked already, so you don't have to do that. I just like to add that with the bacon, get all that going. We're gonna throw some butter in there. Oh my gosh, an onion. Guys, I'm telling you, you're gonna be like, thank you. Thank you, Priscilla. You're the best. All right, let's go over there and get that going. So you're gonna start with two tablespoons of butter. You know, just eyeball it. Just get it moving around in there. Now, if you do get this pan, be fair warning, these get hot, okay? Don't say I didn't tell you so. So you have to use pot holders if you wanna move your pan around. These tongs are incredible. They can also be found on Amazon, but I love them, guys. They're durable, they're easy to work with. I like the shorter ones versus the longer ones. Like, 
That's important to me to have a good pair of tongs. Then you're just gonna take your ham, drop it in the pan, Who doesn't like ham and butter with some bacon thrown in the mix? Just take your bacon. Oh, buddy. This is the basis for my collards as well. So if you don't want cabbage, you could do collards. Same exact way. Just put collards instead of cabbage. Obviously, your bacon's gonna cook down, which will be fine. You're gonna leave your bacon grease in this pan, though, because you need that to flavor your, your cabbage. All right, so you're just gonna let this sit here for a little bit. You can go ahead and cut your onion. Once this has cooked down a lot, then you'll add your onion to it. Dice that up, mix it in here with our cabbage. Don't touch the pan, guys, don't touch it. I told you, don't touch it. So, holy cow, I wish we had smell of vision right now. So just go ahead and mix all these ingredients together. And this is why I like making it in a big pot, because you don't want it to feel all crammed up. Like, typically I make it in a smaller pot sometimes, and it's just harder because you're, you're, everybody's all crammed together. So then you're going to add your apple cider vinegar. As you all know, if you watch me, I don't do measurements. So there you go. That's probably, I would say, a third of a cup. All right. Then you're going to add your garlic powder. One teaspoon of garlic powder. If you're confident when you say things, people will believe it. So I'm saying one teaspoon of garlic powder. Then I'm gonna add some pepper. Remember before I told you, cabbage has no taste, it's, it's tasteless. So you gotta bring your A game when you're talking about flavors in this dish, okay? Or nobody, everybody's gonna be like, well, thanks for the green stuff on my plate that you wilted down, that's awesome. So bring your A-game with spices, guys. Don't let them scare you. Then I'm gonna just add some regular iodized salt. Not too much because you have the ham, you have the bacon, so you don't need it too salty. And then Italian herbs. Why? Well, because why not? There you go. These are special Italian herbs. This is sage, oregano, basil, rosemary, thyme, and fennel. And this was made from my daughter's school. So, there you go. Now, you've got all your spices in there. It smells amazing. It's looking fantastic. Your pot's trying to do the two-step off the burner over here, so you're gonna hold it with this, with your pot holder. Ooh, yeah. Your bacon and your ham, all of that is looking so good. So remember, we have our ribs. They take about two hours. So now you're just gonna put this on low and let it go. Slow and low. That is the theme of this meal. You can't do it wrong, I promise you. So just put your lid on top, let it go, Maybe come back, taste it later on, and see if you need to add any seasonings or anything like that. But other than that, you are good. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing. Okay guys, our cabbage is done. It has been marinating for about an hour, and it smells good. I'm gonna taste it, just to make sure. 
Hold on. Let me get a good taste here. All the things. I'm good at this. We're going to put the lid on that, move it off the stove, and let it sit. You ready to see the ribs? Oh, buddy. Let's check the temp. Now, I'm using this old thermometer because I don't know what happened to my thermometer. Now, your ribs will be done when it's 145 degrees, but if you let them stay to about 190, they're gonna be more tender and juicier. So look at that. It's pretty much 190 on the dot. And I forgot to tell you guys earlier, I leave them flipped over because just like with my turkey, I, I cook it upside down, same concept. I flip them over and all the juices, these are gonna be just, mm, mm. Now, what you can do is if you want that look, you can put them in the oven, put it on a low broil. Do not leave them, like you better be watching them like it's a girlfriend or, or a boyfriend, okay? Like, you're interested. You got a crush. You better be watching them. Because if you leave them, they will burn. I promise you. Don't, don't leave them. All right, let's get our other rack out. I'm going to leave these out for now. And I will broil them on low right before we get ready to eat. That way they're hot and you get that look that you want on the top of the ribs. So... There you go, guys. We're going to plate this up in a little bit, and we will see you next time. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and let me know if you make this recipe. I would love to see in the comments below if you make any changes or if you have any questions for me. Thanks, guys. Bye. interesting it's cabbage you know like it's not when you say it it's not exciting okay today we are gonna be making mouth-watering what Second finger line. licking today we are gonna be making mouth-watering lip what do you do lip licking lit ribs <laughs> That's not what I want to say. Have you guys gotten your onion glasses yet? Amazing! I'm telling you, I've tried every trick in the book. Put bread in your mouth, put it in the fridge, put it in the freezer, drink something, stand on your head. I haven't done that, but I couldn't do that. So I got onion goggles. You too can get your onion goggles. No, I'm just kidding. Not sponsored. You think this looks stupid? You should see runny makeup. Although my makeup doesn't run either, so I'm winning. I'm winning with onion goggles and lipstick mama.